I introduced MBZ uh, last year at Sava XP. Uh, and this is just a quick update on what has happened with the project since then. So I imagine most of you are annoyed. I mean, most of you are aware of me and some of the work I've been doing over the last several years, in addition to my past work on Samba. So I won't bother with too many introductions. Um, the normal disclaimer, basically if something falls out of my mouth, it's my fault. That's pretty usual. Um, since I have such a short time, I'm gonna go real quickly and just mention, here's what's been going on. I've been writing uh, packet uh, dissectors and such for Zambezi over the last year. And that's what you see mostly on the GitHub, uh, on GitLab. Um, but I've also been doing a lot of work learning about uh, new platforms that are coming out. And uh, that would be particularly the new DPU type processors that are running on main boards and on um, smart NICs. And I've been working on a little bit of embedded programming so that I'm clear on how this stuff would actually fall together. Um, and I've been learning about Sonic and the P4 language. So if you're not familiar with Sonic, this is a uh, network operating system that Microsoft co-developed with an open networking group um, so, that, uh, so that infrastructure, software-defined uh, software networking would, could be facilitated. So real quickly, tow cards, if you're familiar with those, you remember those from years back, they've been around for a while. These are TCP offload engines. And the general idea is you put your TCP stack onto the NIC and that way your standard um, um, socket or WinSock API, instead of talking to the stack in the kernel is now talking to the stack that's on the card. And this offloads TCP processing, uh, UDP, other processing to the, uh, to the offload card. Um, iSCSI NICs are the same basic idea with uh, iSCSI added to them so that you can now speak iSCSI um, as if you were speaking regular SCSI to a local controller. So for example, if you just had a local disk, you could pull out that card with the local, disk, local disks, you can plug in an iSCSI NIC and it looks like the same thing, except that the actual LUNs are located somewhere else on the network. SMB offload, uh, which is the general idea I'm working on here, is intended to be the same kind of thing, except that there is no standard API at this point. So I think the, the thing I've discovered about my project is that its main job is to define this API so that we can have an offload capability for SMB. To simplify it, I'm ignoring SMB1. That's probably an obvious thing to do. I'm looking first and foremost at the um, lower level parts of the protocol stack, encryption and compression, as would be, as would be done on uh, in uh, with transform headers uh, in SMB three, uh, and the syntax layer, and that's the um, the parsing and packing of the individual messages. Um, let's go there. Host provided state uh, is necessary to make some of this work. You can't do encryption um, at the transform header layer if you don't have the authentication keys, uh, the, uh, the encryption keys that are supported or generated by the authentication step. You also need to know a few things about what features the upper layer wants you to support and not support. And of course, the whole point of this is to generate fast IO processing so that you can you know, improve performance. Um, Another thing that would be done at this layer, well, quick on a card would be a good idea. That way you're not worried about which particular uh, transport you're using. Um, TCP, NBT, quick, RDMA, all could be done on the offload card. So the upper layer would have to handle the semantics and that's all the file system semantics, um, POSIX layer stuff, uh, synchronized access with local uh, file uh, file access, object stores, NFS, et cetera. Um, metadata management, all that kind of stuff that happens at the upper layer in Samba, for example. 
Um, and so this all has to run above the offload engine. So the API to the offload engine needs to be useful. I mean, it has to be a viable API. It needs to be stable. That's something I'm working on. Coming up with a stable, stable of stable, 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 stabilizable API, and it has to be open. Um, so that's why all the coding I'm doing is open. Make sure that well, I mean that and the fact that I want it to be open. But one of the advantages of it being open is that open uh, open code generates open APIs. Um, and the SMB uh, SMB two three implementation should be able to use you know some multiple things Samba something else should all be able to use that API and it should be able to, it should be possible to have a different offload engines because you have two NICs in the machine that have two different stacks. They should present the AP, same API so that they can be used together. And so the goal is to build a rational well-documented API. Um, it needs to be stackable so that you can add new dialects and features and capabilities. And then it also has to be presented to the user in a way that they, you know, to the developer community in a way that it can be used as a device driver, a library, a toolkit, possibly all of those. And that's going to mean I need to develop a community around this. So that's why I present it to you all. A uh, quick rundown on SmartNICs. I've got six minutes. Um, these are network interface cards with powerful processing capabilities. There are a lot of them out there now. Uh, a couple of years ago when I started talking about this, it was an idea I thought was coming. Now it's an idea that's definitely here. Some of them are FPGA ba based. Um, I'm pretty much interested in the multi-core ASIC based, although there are combo types that can be, can be used. Uh, but they're a generic networking offload device. They have multiple interfaces. They have connectivity to multiple different kinds of physical layers, um, fiber channel, ethernet, NVMe over fabrics. They can support RDMA. The ones that use ASICs, multi-core processors are common. Um, and they have PCI interconnect as well. And some of them run Linux. Uh, there's one brand out there that has a couple of high-speed Ethernet connect connections, and then a one gigabit Ethernet connection, you'll look and say, what's that for? And what that's for is that you can log into the Linux operating system that's running on the card to manage the card. For the ASIC-based SmartNICs, we're talking about a new class of processor called a data processing unit, or DPU. This is the brains of the SmartNIC. Um, and DPUs are also being placed on main boards, motherboards. It's a chip, okay? And they're basically risk-based chips. Uh, ARM is very popular. I've seen MIPS. I'm hoping to see RISC-V-based SmartNICs. And one of the key features that distinguishes a DPU from other types of processors is that they have a lot of IO bandwidth a lot of IO capability built right onto the chip. So the quick update on Zambezi, on where my code is. Uh, on this chart, everything that is unhighlighted is implemented. Um, not necessarily fully tested, but it is implemented. Uh, the tree connect is implemented, but I'm missing some of the, um, uh, the, uh, the context structure. I have the structures, I don't have the the context uh, packing and unpacking written. And the ones that are highlighted are the ones that I'm currently working on, particularly uh, query directory, query info, set info, that's top of my list right now, probably followed by ICTL. Um, a lot of the messages were very simple, so they were easy to do. But when I get to things so I create, it's a monster and it's gonna take me some time to get all the pieces working. Uh, but it's necessary because some of the other things like Oplox rely on uh, data types that I would define for create. Short-term goals, I want to write a proxy daemon. I'm working on that. Uh, transform headers, I want to get those working. Uh, more unit tests, I find bugs when I write unit tests. How about that? Um, 
I want to finish messages, the messages including create, and I need to study other code. I'm very interested in the uh, kernel, uh, the kernel code um, that uh, Namjay is working on, um, because a lot of that could could reflect well. It could it could uh, also be effective here. Um, there's a lot of other stuff. I that's you know I'm paying attention to what other people are doing. Um, and where else might my code be useful? Um, well, if you've not come across Sonic, I enc encourage you to, um, to look for it, so the Sonic NAS uh, network operating system. Um, there's a new language called P4 that works with that, that does um, packet inspection uh, and makes decisions based on that. Um, proxy and cache servers, obviously. Uh, WAN accelerators, it's a great place to use some of this. Hypervisors and remote access portals all could use this kind of this kind of uh, infrastructure. So it really is a software defined networking piece that I'm working on. And as I said, I think it's becoming more and more popular uh, right now. I, I just noticed a blog post that came out very recently where Dell as one of the major vendors has made a major commitment to this kind of infrastructure, particularly Sonic P4, uh, DPU processors, um, smart NICs, and building networking on top of that. Um, the current code is, is LGPLv3 and AGPLv3, depending on whether it's um, library code or whether it's running as, uh, as an actual program. Um, the published mon modules are not well tested, I have to admit. But they are fairly complete and shouldn't be that hard to clean up. Um, one of the things about this, I remember once Jeremy said that I don't write code, I write novels. Um, uh, my code is excessively well documented. And the point of that is really to make it uh, readable by as many people, uh, studyable as as many people as possible. Um, here's the link. That's where the code is based. It's on GitLab, Ubix, Zambezi. Hello. A couple of things. Um, the real quick. I know I'm running out of time here. Giant Luna Moth, at least in the movie version of Doctor Doolittle, is attracted by the light of the moon, so it flies there. And once it's on the moon, it gets attracted by the light of the Earth, and so it flies back again. The cycle repeats. Uh, this is how Doctor Doolittle gets back and forth. Um, I have this problem when I'm doing some of this work. I'll be in the middle of writing some code and something about it will remind me of something about a smart NIC or a DPU that I wanted to ask myself, I wanted to learn about. So I go read the docs or watch the videos and that distracts me for a while and before I can get back to the code. Um, I've also been working with this little thing. I wanted to do embedded tinkering. So I've, I've discovered this little project called Altibo for the Raspberry Pi. When you write your code in Altibo, it's free Pascal based. You write your code in Alt Altibo, you compile it. It compiles into a module which you then can directly boot. Uh, so there's no operating system. You boot directly to what you wrote, which is compiled with a library of other code that makes it run. And it provides things like built in support for NTFS. Um, and this is a very good model for the kind of coding you would do for a smart NIC. Uh, you can have Linux running on the SmartNIC, or you can just write code that just runs on the SmartNIC. It's been very fun working with this. I recommend you know getting a look at taking a look at this kind of coding. Um, I've also been playing with the idea of implementing ATA over Ethernet. Uh, it's not very popular these days. It's not very important, but it is a block storage protocol that could be implemented on a device like this. Uh, just for the experience of having done so. Uh, there's a lot of learning, learning potential here. So in summary, my goal is to get this all done to the point that people can start playing with it. I'd like to work with the SNEA and other organizations perhaps to standardize the API I'm developing um, and fork a reference implementation of my code so that it uh, can be available under the SNEA's uh, license. Um, which is an open source license, I think it's MIT based. Um, I wanna part partner with others to implement on SmartNICs and on Sonic. And I wanna find new and interesting use cases for this code. 
There's me, there's the code. And that is my 15 minute update.